sort of have to chuckle when they describe you and me as being dangerous. <laughs> That's one thing they are telling the truth, because we are dangerous to the status quo of this country. Ron Paul is here. He retired from Congress in January after serving 12 terms as a representative from Texas. He dedicated his long political career to advocating libertarian principles, individual liberty, economic freedom, and non-interventionist foreign policy. He ran for president on that platform three times. He has been called the intellectual godfather of the Tea Party movement. In his new book, he writes about America's education system and proposes changes to fix it. It is called The School Revolution, A New Answer for Our Broken Education System. I am pleased to have him here at this table for the first time. Welcome. Thank you. Nice it's to be here. It's about time you came here. <laughs> no. So let me, before we talk about the book and yeah. education, and the book's called The School Revolution, A New Answer for Our Broken Education System, as I said, define what libertarianism means to you. You know, there, to me, uh, the word I use to best define it is something not a lot of people use. I call it non-intervention. Yeah. And uh, non intervention in personal life, non intervention yes. in foreign policy, non intervention in. There it is. You know. Because it sort of tells you what conservatives and libertarians and constitutionalists and liberal, classical liberalism has been used closely as a line, you know, mm. with libertarianism. But non intervention, as you say, it, I don't want to interfere in your personal life. The one rule is you can't hurt another person. You know, that's right, when government's right, right, necessary. Right, yeah. Your we don't freedom ends at the beginning of the right. person's nose. And, and uh, the founders were pretty pretty adamant about uh, advice about not getting involved in entangling alliances or interfering in the internal affairs of other nations. So that's non-intervention. And then also in the economy. Sometimes I get close allies with the left. Mm. An honest, progressive Democrat like a Dennis Kucinich is always, we were always worked together on civil liberties and foreign policy. But then when it came to economic policy, I apply the same rule of non-intervention to economics. Now, they say, well, you mean that means business people can do anything they want? No, there's still some very That's basic why I'm asking rules. the question. I mean, what yeah. kind of regulation are you prepared to well, think is necessary in a capitalist system? Mostly they're not government regulations. They're not preemption. I look at this like if you're in the media business, the uh, one thing you don't want is prior restraint, you know, right. Right. because... The, the government is going to tell you what you can say and what you can't say. Why well, apply that to economics? That you produce a product, and there's no prior restraint. You say, well, how do you get th this uh, this protection? The market, the free market, is pretty strict. Okay, on even, so you wouldn't want to see a FDA. No, they, okay, they, 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 they do you, as you much. Have to, you have to get their approval before you can market a drug. Yeah, and they, the, FDA, people, the FDA is uh, run by individuals who used to be in the drug. They're, they're connected with the uh, Well, you can't the drug, just dismiss the, it that industry. way. I mean, there's an idea here, brother, uh, okay, that, that the, they're corrupt people because of whatever. No, most, most of the time when you have regulations, say you regulate banking, the banking lobby writes those. If it's okay, FDA. Okay, but, but stay with it. Okay, you, but let's assume what you're saying. It's true. Well, that's, good, that's one good reason not to do okay, it. The pharmaceutical <laughs> company controls the FDA. Right. Is that your point? Yeah, yeah. And so, therefore, whatever they do uh, is is what? Well, sometimes they prevent good drugs from coming out, okay. and sometimes they endorse but bad isn't drugs. But they keep bad drugs from coming out? Is that a useful purpose? Yes. But and that's what, prior restraint, then? But yes, but you're making the assumption that in the market there would be nobody to supervise. There would be supervisory organizations that would war watch Voluntary some, organizations? Yeah, I mean, you have a good housekeeping seal of approval that people use all the time. You, you Why believe do you, that would work with respect to drugs when you know I think also. it will not be perfect, but what we have today is so imperfect because the assumption is made that most business people don't want to take good care of their customers. And I think that's wrong. I think most business yeah, people... Yeah, but the question is not what most want to do. The question is, is how do you make sure those who don't want to take care of their if customers, you think... who want to do otherwise, that there is some barrier from them doing it? Yeah, if, if you want perfect safety in any area, in social matters... Not perfect, but it minimizes the kind of things yeah. that, whether it's, you know... Yeah, some... I think... I think every regulation creates uh, the necessity of having two new regulations, and that's why the Federal Register grows okay. all the time. It, it, they don't solve the problems. They are unintended consequences. There's expenses involved. But the but again, assumption you're is... Saying all bad regulations, I mean, you know, as long as there are regulations that don't serve the purpose, you should have no regulations. 
I want regulations by the marketplace because there are something you can't commit fraud, you can't steal, you can't hurt people, you can't you can't do a lot, and there should be immediate reaction. It's it's not like you can do anything you want, and the basic assumption is that business people want to satisfy their customers. But when you have regulations, it becomes politicized. It's totally political. It's sort of like distributing uh, R&D funds. Oh, well, everybody wants research and development, okay. but if it's political, okay. it, you, you put the money into the wrong things. Then are you saying regulations are a bad thing because they don't work, uh, because they become politicized? or? Those are pretty good reasons. Okay, but they yeah, the moral, reason. my, Mine is a moral reason that moral uh, reason. a moral reason that uh, I don't. The same reason I don't have the moral reason to come here and use prior restraint because you might libel right. somebody or you know you might say yeah. something that will harm a lot of people. Just think of the damage, the, the damage done by bad philosophy. You know, philosophy and religion. Look at all the things that are done. But we wouldn't think for a minute. More people have been killed by bad religious theology, you know, distorted theology, distorted, I think right. it is, as, uh, as long as in, in philosophy. Yeah. I mean, the philosophy of oh, totalitarianism has been around for a long time, but, but we don't burn the books and prevent you from studying it because, and look at the much more harm was done by freedom of choice in, with our minds and in religion. You know, th those kind of problems are so much greater then if you say uh, that uh, th there's a self-regulatory uh, aspect of what free people will do, we gave up too soon on the principles of liberty, and I think that's uh, really m what I'm interested in. Did the Federal Reserve serve us well then at the time of the economic collapse? No, Did I they think, serve well I think they, prolong, they prolong the agony, and it just means that there's going to be more suffering later on. We're into our fifth year now, and uh, it's, we're embarking on what we did in the 30s. The Depression lasted 15 years. The correction yeah. wasn't permitted. Yeah. The Japanese economy hasn't revived because they kept doing the wrong things. You have to allow a correction of all the mistakes, and we have not allowed that to happen. Uh, in other words, what would you have preferred to have been the response to the economic Collapse. Do a lot less. Not created as a bash. You know, prevention. So what if all the banks had gone under and all that? That would yeah. have been okay because the market worked. Because it's it's the best thing to do is not reward the people who made so much money. The people who were in the derivatives market and the market they were rewarded at the penalty of the middle class. They got the taxes. They lost their jobs. They lost their mortgages. They lost their houses. And, and the, would, would more if they hadn't stepped in and said this is a temporary matter, but we have to step because the economic system, like it did in the Great Depression, is about to collapse. Yeah. But what they did was what they did in the depression and and made it worse. So that that is the the real Closing problem. the banks made it worse. B bailing them out and propping up a system that caused a problem. But if you're looking for a good example of what you could do to limit it, see, I, the Fed came in in '13. They inflated massively, you know, for World War One, and then there had to be a correction because it was overinvestment and distortion. So in 1921, there was a depression. It lasted one year, and none of us even study it in school, because. Hands off. The people have overextended, and they weren't solvent. They were out of business, and it was over. But in the 30s, the Keynesians came in and said, you can't do this. Out of humanitarian concerns, we have to care for people. So they said, spend more money, borrow more money, print more money. And the Depression ended not until after World so, War II. So stimulating the economy on the part of the Federal Reserve or, or any other policy is not a good idea at a time <laughs> Of well, economic, it's never severity. a good idea because they stimulate the stimulation. You don't know where it's going to go. In the 90s, we stimulated uh, the, all the money going in. It went into the Nasdaq and created a bubble. Uh, in, in the early part of this uh, uh, century, the money went into housing. So you can't control it. You can say, well, money out there will help stimulate, but you never know. But it stimulates one thing for the middle class, and those are prices. Yeah. So some people make a lot of money. It's to the benefit of governments and the bureaucrats and big business and military industrial complex, but it's not good for the middle class because their cost of living ne never, their cost of living goes up much faster than their wages. And just look at it today. I, I mean, we have two societies and that's explainable by Austrian economics. It's not explainable by saying, well, the 1%, the rich people, if you're in top 10%, we need to tax so you more. So under a president, Ron Paul, we would not have had an idea you once had. Did you seriously think you could be president? 
Yeah, I, I could it, be, but really I wasn't sitting there uh, anticipating that that would likely but it was worth happen. Probably Deborah because I used, you could I used a kid that I'm taking a risk, you know. <laughs> it could <laughs> have happened. It could have but, but when I ran first time for Congress, I, uh, I had no thought ever of ever winning an election because I spoke the same way. Yeah. And I kept telling that. my wife, don't worry, I'm not going to be elected because they won't elect somebody who's attacking Santa Claus. Yeah. You know, you're challenging. This. When you challenge the entire status quo, it's not like you say, all right, you know, I can convert you all in 10 minutes. So this is why I never got frustrated in Washington because, uh, you know, in, in Washington, I didn't expect to change it. So what happened outside of Washington, I have been amazingly surprised. So looking at the world today, when should the United States use force overseas? If somebody uses force against us and overseas, is it virtually never. I mean, we don't... Uh, so it's none of business of ours if chem if the Syrians use chemical weapons. Well, no, and, and not, words, in terms not, not of directly. That kind of it should the be. President was we we should deal with the things that are our responsibility because uh, on the in the last couple of years we've killed five thousand people with drone missiles. Right. And what do you think it, of that? I think it's horrible. We have something to say about that. Those are our elected leaders. We shouldn't pretend that we know when to intervene in Syria. Here we are today. Our president's working very hard to make sure that a lot of people in this country don't have guns. Right. At the same time, we're giving guns to the al-Qaeda who's fighting Assad and they're involved in this and we're benefiting and, and how are we giving guns to al-Qaeda well we're helping we're sending weapons into the rebels yeah and, but I mean uh, you know better you know that they're not trying to send weapons to al-Qaeda they're trying to send them to the uh, they've even Syrian said because, that if it's necessary they believe that if in fact Assad they can overthrow Assad that it'll send it, it makes it weakens Iran, and they certainly want to weaken others, Iran. Others you know have that. suggested they know exactly what they're doing. And if you're if you're supporting the military overthrow and supporting any rebel group, you support them all. I mean, w w didn't we do something very similar with bin Laden in Afghanistan when he was the Mujahideen? Let's assume that there is convincing evidence that the Iranians not only have the capacity but have nuclear weapons. Now, that's been a red line. Every American president has said that's unacceptable. What does Ron Paul say? I would treat them sort of like we did with the Soviets. They had 30,000, right. and we talked to them. And so containment is okay with you? Well, I certainly wouldn't go to war. Do you think the Iranians are going to attack us? <laughs> they don't have any... Here, we what? look at the discussion we've had for 10 years would or more... To, would you want to risk that? ...on a weapon that doesn't exist. Right. I mean, right now, Obama, if anything, we're getting hints... I think they're delightful that they're willing to talk to this new leader over there. Yeah. I think this is wonderful that he'll at least talk. That's what's my so argument. So when the president the talks about engagement, you're saying, right on, brother. Uh, if you want to talk to him, fine and dandy. I think that we should do a lot more talking. You know how many thousands of diplomats yeah. we have. It's time we've had a little bit of okay. diplomacy. What does the Tea Party represent today? I think it represents a, uh, a, a group of people that aren't uniform in all their beliefs, right, right. except for they're disgusted with big government, the operation of government, the efficiency of government, and especially the spending in government. Mm -hmm. But uh, actually, the very first time this started up was during our campaign, but then it branched out and Republicans got very and, much involved. And, and if it's tied to uh, shutting down the government, is that okay with Ron Paul? Well, well, yes, because the alternative is turning the United States into Detroit. <laughs> you know, you just can't keep spending money and trillions of dollars and borrow it uh, and printing money. But so so it's going to, it's, the calamity is going to be much worse than, so. than uh, slowing up the spending. That's why I like having you here. The school revolution, a new answer for a broken education system. What's broken? And, and lots of people believe lots is broken. Yeah. <laughs> and how would you fix it? Well, that is. The people agree that it's broken. We've had a system uh, for 100, 150 years based on uh, compulsion and conformity, and I don't think that's good. It's a dictatorial, it's an authoritarian uh, system. It has abolished uh, creativity and curiosity, which is very necessary. So the whole theme of the book is based around the philosophy we were just talking about, and it's the philosophy of liberty, which is non-coercive. And uh, our public school system teaches the authoritarian approach, why you have to have government run the economy, why you have to protect the government against bad social habits, and why you have to police the world. So it's, it's a philosophy that it contradicts everything in the freedom philosophy. So the book is based on what is liberty, how to define it, how to defend it, 
for the sole purpose of getting a better education. And, uh, and the design for an education, f for this, this being grade school and high school, it's how you get into college, how you start a business. But it's, it's really designed in such a way where the student and the parents become totally in charge and not the Washington scene. You know, Washington now is writing, you know, it's Republicans and Democrats. Uh, the Republicans gave us no child left behind, and, you know, nobody likes that anymore. And now we're having core curriculum. It's more and more testing and controls, and the kids are bored to death. Kids want to learn. Uh, before they get into school, that's all they do is they ask questions and they learn. In school, uh, the public school system just sort of squelches all that curiosity. I, I, I know. With respect to public schools, though, um, homeschooling, you believe that is the way to go in terms of parents who believe that the, I, uh, that the public school education is not benefiting their kids? I think it's an option that doesn't solve all the problems because I don't think 100% of the people should homeschool. Okay. You know, I, 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 the goal is to look at people who are self-starters and self-disciplined to create leadership, people who are interested in another school of thought on economics and willing to listen to the non-interventionist policies that I talk about. So uh, th it's probably 20% maximum uh, that would mm. be, uh, you know, uh, you know, likely to take this course, and uh, also, it's it's designed to protect liberty, which means it protects everybody's homeschooling program. Mine is non-religious. It's right. it's sort of a secular approach to liberty, so that the individuals are always protected. You know, and then we get away from all these arguments. Can you say in prayer at school? Yeah, and right, what right, books? Right. Are, how how are you going to pick the right book in a public school? You know, mm -hmm. because we can find all kinds of examples of a very great bias in our public schools. But I don't want to get in there and be in charge of rewriting the textbooks because you can't satisfy everybody. But if you have people going to private right. schools and homeschooling, right. really, that is diversity. That's the kind of diversity. How about charter schools? What do you think of them? Charter school probably gives some people some benefit, but once again, it's, you know, a, a government. I think it's the best thing it serves the purpose is they do better, you know, than the regular you know, public school system. And sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. Yeah, course. and yeah. so I don't, that isn't the answer. I'm not promoting it. Um, are you optimistic about America because of what is it, the essence of our creed? I'm, you know, I I'm mean the, by that the Constitution and the Bill of Rights. And, you know, when, when I go to the college campuses, which I continue to do, uh, and I like that, and I talk, you know, about right. all our problems, right. about 90% of the time, then I talk about liberty yeah. and why I'm optimistic, why the market works, yeah. and why your business and your life is your own, and why it would be so much better for the world if we didn't have a policy of war. So I'm, I become very optimistic, and I'm optimistic because of the reception I get, because libertarian freedom is on the move, and for two reasons. One, it's been developed over the last 30 years. Also, the failure of the system. This Keynesian economics and welfareism and socialism and, and uh, inflationism, it's failing. Our foreign policy is failure, failing, and people want something different. So the doors are open for an idea, and I think the ideas of liberty are just a wonderful thing, so I'm an optimist about that. Uh, any doubt in your mind that the senator from Kentucky, Rand Paul, your son, will run for president? Well, uh, I, guess, I think it's a little early. When they started that last year, you know, in the fall, they started to buy about the next election. I said, I'm still trying to count my votes from the last election. <laughs> wait, wait a minute. So, uh, uh, my, I mean, he's he, acting like he's very interested. I don't know yet. He's acting so like he's I running. Say, yeah. He acts like he's running. Yeah, I, I, would, I wouldn't argue with that. But, uh, you know, people don't believe this. But he and I don't have a whole lot of conversations like that about what are you going to do today. Well, do you have a whole lot in common? We have a lot in common. Yeah, do you? Oh, yeah, no. oh, I think so. Like 99% of what he says, you oh, agree with 99% yeah, of what I, you say. Yeah. Well, what do you differ over? I, I think probably approach. He's a little, a little more uh, nuanced, I guess. Or say oh, something. he's more nuanced. <laughs> <laughs> so, but he's, uh, he's, uh, well, he's, he's leading the charge. I, I don't yeah. think he's going to come out and say that the Fed is the greatest offer we, we ever had, and we don't need to audit them. <laughs> That's not going to happen. And then he, if he does that, he can't go. And he's been very good on NSA, <laughs> and I like that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, right, and yeah. on, and yeah. right and left. My well, main just, goal... Just tell me what you like about NSA. That's a good point. Nothing. Exactly. Nothing. I, I don't like it. But what I like about the debate 
and the debate, what I'm talking about in the school and what I did in Congress is bring a new coalition together. And we saw it with NSA and we saw it with the vote, on, the vote that didn't occur on the right. war. And that's bringing progressive Democrats together with libertarians. I think that's the new move. And I think progressive it, Democrats and libertarians is a new majority. I think they can become. I mean, they didn't win the vote on NSA, but they yeah. only lost by 12 yeah. against. Mm -hmm. Pelosi and Boehner. Yeah. See, the established parties, Republican and Democrat Party, endorse the same views. Most people think they're really at loggerheads over yeah, but philosophy, I mean, but yeah. they're not. Where they come together with the Tea Party is mainly on, on from the left side is, is civil liberties, isn't it? Yeah, civil liberties. Civil liberties having to do with freedom yeah, of expression, on, on having forward, to do with foreign policy too. Yeah. yeah. So those those two issues, those those are big issues right now, you know. Uh, so I'm matter of fact the position I took in the campaign on the economic issues because we're broke and it's going to lead to, you know, bad things. I say, why don't we agree to bring troops home and save our money? And I said, even though I'm opposed to some of these social programs, child health care and these mm -hmm. things, I said, but so many people are dependent on it. I will not start there and start cutting those programs. Sometimes Republicans get trapped into saying, you know, we're going to cut some welfare programs and they want billions and billions more In to police welfare. the welfare. So <laughs> I don't take that approach. And that's the reason I don't seem to be so hostile to even working with people who have a disagree with me yeah. uh, and they might want total government medicine, which obviously I, I don't. But uh, you could work a transition. I don't expect it. I would work by cutting, changing the foreign policy and having a foreign policy that defended this country, saving a lot of money and trying to wean people off these programs. But I'm afraid the programs are going to self-destruct with a, a currency crisis. You know, uh, if uh, we, we uh, uh, you know, keep borrowing, the foreigners are still loaning us money and we keep printing it, but the market will decide when enough is enough. Mm. And uh, then, uh, then they'll just say interest rates are going up and the interest payments will be the biggest item in the budget. The book is called The School Revolution, A New Answer for Our Broken Educational System. Ron Paul, thank you for joining us. See you next time.